Tonight's history's headlines, we recall the Wilbur family. You may not know their name, but chances are you, you may know their house. Look to the right as you cross over the Hill to Hill Bridge into Bethlehem, and you can't miss it. A slice of 1860s life, reimagined for the modern crowd. The house that E.P. built. It's called an Italianate style villa. Uh, it has a large tower at the top, sometimes called a Belvedere, and uh, that was sort of like the trademark of these types of houses. It was no breakers of Vanderbilt fame, but it was the home of one of the Lehigh Valley's most well-to-do families of the 19th century, the Wilbers. The story of the Wilbur family is also the story of the Packer family. Both had roots in New England dating back to the 1600s. It was a young Asa Packer who decided to make tracks for Pennsylvania in the early 1800s. So he walked, the hardy soul that he was, 200 miles to uh, northern Pennsylvania to the Muckchunk area. Asa Packer found success first in the canal boat business. He brought on his young nephew, Elijah Packer Wilbur, or EP, to manage the company's store. Wilbur's mother was Packer's sister. Later, the families would be heavily involved in running the Lehigh Valley Railroad. So, when a now married with children E.P. Wilbur wanted to build a new home, there was only one place that made sense. This thriving community of South Bethlehem, which is developing around this Lehigh Valley Railroad that Packer has created. Robert Sayer, another key player in the railroad, already lived next door to the plot of land Wilbur was eyeing. When it came time to design the place, he brought in the best. By a fellow named Samuel Sloan, who was one of the leading architects in America, and it also built the Mock Chunk Mansion for Asa Packer. The home, completed in 1864, had five bedrooms and, perhaps even more impressive, indoor plumbing. This was considered quite fancy that they actually had all of these toilets in there. Wilbur died in 1910. Later, the Masons took over the home and built a large meeting hall next door. In 2015, John and Lynn Noble bought the property. And now, after extensive renovations, the Wilbur has been reborn as a boutique hotel, restaurant, and event space.